We have with us Sanjeev Sanyal, who is Prime Minister's uh, economic advisor, of course. And recently, one of his comments on the UPSC exam went viral on uh, social media, essentially. And what you said, Mr. Sanyal, I found it so... Uh, so important, so significant, because uh, there was a phrase you used that this obsession with UPSC exams kind of reflects a poverty of aspiration. Um, before we get into how this poverty of aspiration manifests itself, can you um, weigh in on where you think it comes from, sociologically, economically, culturally speaking, why are Indians so obsessed with the UPSC exam? So let me be very clear what I was talking hmm. about. Yes. <coughs> this is not about reforming the bureaucracy, whether it's efficient, sure. non-efficient, uh, technocrats versus generalists. This is nothing. Not this conversation is nothing about the bureaucracy as it exists. Sure. I have views on how to improve its efficiency, but hmm. this is not about that. In hmm. fact, it's not about the bureaucracy at all, or even about the UPSC exam itself. Hmm. The problem is that what has happened is that there is now a almost cult-like uh, group of people who are call themselves the UPSC aspirants mm. and this is there are lakhs of such people uh, who take this exam year after year um, much of them spending large part of their 20s repeatedly taking this exam mm. uh, sometimes into their early 30s as well mm. and it appears to me that this is a huge waste of youthful energy Mm. I mean, it's perfectly okay to take the exam once or twice. Uh, you know, every country needs a bureaucracy. If young people want to join it, great. Mm. Uh, but what has happened, as I said, is become more like religious cult. In fact, it's complete with uh, all the manifestations of it, including uh, preachers who do motivational videos, um, you know, go out and pro prolesthesize. Uh, it has its own rituals. And mm. to the point that even those who succeed in these exams can't seem to leave the cult. Mm. So you have people who have actually succeeded. I mean, they have really won the lottery. They are in, you know, the in one of the services, but they are aiming for IAS. Yes, they, they, mm. they are in the Indian Revenue Service or one of the other services, but they are still taking the exam to get into a higher service. Mm. So it it clearly is the you know every manifestation of being an addic addiction or a cult. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just very unhealthy. Right. But again, going back to my question, where do you think it comes from? Is because for the longest time, um, the bureaucracy has been a symbol of power. It's To begin with, it's a permanent, stable, secure job. And two, it exudes a lot of power. So for a lot of people who would otherwise in their lives feel very helpless, socially, economically and so on, this can be that one big ticket. So is that the part of the reason why are we so obsessed, culturally so obsessed with the UPSC? So this is, this and, is, this and is what I'm questioning. And the obsession did not change with liberalization, with kind of the coming of private jobs? Or do you think it changed a little bit? So this is, this is exactly the point that I am mm. trying to uh, sort of dig into. Mm. See, I, I am of the crossover generation. So mm. India mm. liberalized its economy in yeah. 1991. I was at university. Mm. And even at that time, there was a group of people who took the UPSC exam. And there were people who, who would go off to JNU and pretend to do their uh, PhD. But in fact, they were preparing for the UPSC exam. Fine. And, you know. Since, since there were uh, no, not many other jobs, hmm. uh, I understand that. Uh, and in, while I was at university, that began to change. Hmm. And so you suddenly had people who did the CAT, got MBA, got various kinds of jobs. Later it became people set up startups and you know, a wider array of, of aspirations appeared. Hmm. Hmm. Now one would have thought that that would dissolve in many ways this obsession with UPSC. But there are parts of India and Bihar being one of them, hmm. uh, to some extent UP, maybe some parts of Rajasthan, whatever, where there is in fact in some ways an even greater obsession hmm. today with getting into UPSC hmm. than there was uh, 30 years ago. Hmm. Now, as I said, this is not about simply lack of jobs. Uh, uh, you know, there is um, lots of jobs uh, mm. in other areas that didn't appear mm. 30 years ago. You know, I, I have to interject here and I have to ask you, there was, um, again, we can have debate over the report itself, but there was, in fact, this morning, a report from the 
international labor organization that came out on the uh, Indian sort of the status of employment in India and it said that the share of youngsters with secondary or higher education in the total unemployed youth has almost doubled from 35 percent in 2000 to almost 65 percent in 2022. So this youthful energy that we're talking about a lot of comments on your tweets as well said okay but these people are educated and they feel like they have nowhere to go to and that's why they get into this uh, cycle of almost so I, I let me say hmm. it's not like they aren't putting in law, large amount of effort hmm. many of these people if you read those comments hmm. they actually left perfectly well-paying jobs hmm. and as i said there are people even in the irs or the railways or even the IPS which is one of the more coveted hmm, things hmm, hmm. who are writing this exam over to and over again IAS. to get into the IAS or IFS or whatever they think hmm. is higher up the hmm. value chain. So there may be other problems of generating jobs and so on and in a country like India that is to be taken seriously but that is a different debate to be had. Hmm. Here I am just dealing with a one peculiar problem hmm. which is an obsession which I think is hurting a large number of people hmm. and uh, in the end of this cycle uh, there are a large number of young people who would have had perfectly good jobs in other fields hmm. uh, had they you know taken one or two attempts and then carried on with their lives is there something about the culture of the government which also feeds into this obsession still of course we have had the prime minister talk about getting rid of the babu culture in many ways but do you think there's still something about the system of the government that Yes, so this is where I did, did, I mean the context in which I brought this in hmm. is in the context of poverty of aspiration. Hmm. That there is, particularly in Eastern India, this the people are stuck in, in this poverty of aspiration problem particularly. Hmm. Uh, we talked about of course this being there in Bihar. I'll take go to my own home state, West hmm. Bengal. Hmm. What is the aspiration there? Uh, for a long, long time the aspiration was to be a union leader or to be an Atel uh, intellectual. So guess what, uh, guess what Bengal got? It got union leaders and Atil intellectuals hmm. uh, and the economy fell apart. Hmm. Uh, so as I said, we have to be very careful about who you are con taking as your heroes in, as a society because very likely you are going to hmm. end up essentially getting that. And ironically, a lot of these coaches that you mentioned are these people putting up motivational videos. Uh, they themselves are not part of the IAS system and they are making probably a lot more money than IAS officers. One so in fact, uh, they, they, the people who are doing these coaching classes are in, indeed, uh, you know, minting money as cult leaders. And they are themselves proof that uh, since they are making, as you said, uh, much more money than uh, you could joining the bureaucracy. Uh, and notice that they are themselves not joining the bureaucracy. Yeah. Uh, suggests to me uh, that you know the power of entrepreneurship is uh, is very powerful. <laughs> exactly. uh, that you know the people who are doing the coaching classes are themselves uh, uh, entrepreneurs. It, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have to ask a question because it's so pivotal to this debate, which is the coaching uh, center, this coaching industry almost. And you spoke about how there are uh, entire cities uh, which kind of thrive on this business. Uh, we uh, maybe. I don't know if for UPSC, but for so many exa competitive examinations, we have cases of children, young people committing suicide over and over again. And uh, people kind of being lured into coming into these kind of coachings over a year after year. Do you think the system needs any kind of regulation? Well, it's difficult to say whether this requires regulation. Uh, it certainly requires a public debate, which is what I'm trying to, to trigger. Mm. That look, you know, it's perfectly fine for people who want government jobs, uh, but you know to have this kind of obsession uh, to go through this over and over again, mm. in the face of fact that there are actually many uh, opportunities. Remember, the people who are attempting these tests are not uh, the people with no education. Otherwise, we won't be able to take the test. These are uh, usually people with at least a university mm. education. Mm. So it's not the case that many of these people could not get other jobs. Mm. So, you know, this debate about unskilled labor, etc. is a completely unlinked to this hmm. conversation. Hmm. Uh, do you think it's a peculiarity that uh, of India that uh, the private sector does not evoke that kind of 
either obsession or just that kind of aspiration. As so I think a, this is precisely what I'm trying to say. And look, why do you think that's the case? Why has the so private what, sector uh, not managed to create this? So it kind depends of, where you are. Hmm. To be fair, if you are in Mumbai, hmm. uh, you are not uh, aspiring to become a civil servant. In Mumbai, you aspire to be a stockbroker sure. or movie star or um, hmm. uh, or an industrialist or hmm. some such other thing. Hmm. Or if you are in Bangalore, you are trying to do a te technology startup hmm. or something else. Hmm. So. It, this is, it is the case that there are parts of India where this is not an issue. Hmm. I mean, hmm. there aren't large numbers of people in Gujarat, for example, who are have hmm. this obsession. It's a much smaller problem. Do you think it's a poverty-related obsession as it well? Is from not, poorer well, it may states, be, uh, it from may be from poorer states, but I, as I think the point I was making is that this is circular. If your aspirations are limited, you will get that outcome. Hmm. Because in the end, we are a democracy, hmm. Hmm. right? We get ultimately elect the leaders we want. Hmm. So if you elect leaders who will give you union leaders hmm. and and Atel intellectuals, hmm. then you will elect Jyoti Basu. Hmm. 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 So if you your aspiration is a local goon politician, hmm. then you will get local goon politician. Hmm. And if you don't want to be a local ghoul politician, then your aspiration will be at most, okay, civil servant. Mm, mm, mm. So, what I'm trying to do is to people to g break out of this. Mm. So, it is, people think that poverty is leading to this problem. Mm. I am arguing it's the other way around. It's poverty of aspiration that leads you to this problem. Mm, mm. And as I said, I'm, a first, I'm the first hand witness of what happened to Kolkata. Poverty of aspiration destroyed Kolkata. Where does it come from? Is what I really uh, that want you to can ask. have that that maybe a large there's a public debate on this. So maybe you can have a sociological conversation on this. So maybe researchers can work it mm. out. Mm. But this is not unique to India or our point in history. Mm. Mm. Look at what is happening to the West. Mm. Uh, these are people who used to uh, you know have aspirations of uh, uh, going to the moon. Uh, they had aspirations mm. of uh, discovering new drugs, discovering, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, quantum mechanics and all mm. that. Mm. Now they are into discovering gender, so they are getting. Therefore, their politics and aspirations reflect their uh, mm. what has happened to much of the West as we speak. Mm. Mm. So, uh, I would argue that it is the poverty of aspiration that leads to mm. the problems, not the other way mm. around. Uh, I have to conclude by asking this. Uh, you know, one of the more popular sayings uh, about IAS officers is that India mein teen post hai, wo, they exude the maximum kind of power, which is PM, CM and DM. So, do you think this whole persona aura of a DM in a village, that needs to be changed in order to change the aspiration that that DM's uh, office evokes in the minds of ordinary children? No, I think them? let's not blame the poor DM. Hmm. In fact, no, I'm talking about quite separately, no, quite hmm. separately, let me tell you, it's actually a real, uh, uh, one of the issues which I will discuss in a different uh, context, we really need to begin to reform our bureaucracy and give the DM more powers. The way the, the bureaucracy is set up, hmm. the poor DM, although he, he was expected to deliver all those services, is the junior most person in the cog, yeah. cog in the wheel. Sure. Right? Some 32, 33 year old who is expected to deliver all these services. Hmm. He is too junior to even ask for help from the hmm. because his seniors in, in the state capital are not going to even pick up his phone. And he is expected to deliver on the ground. I think it's totally unfair. We need to rethink our way our hmm. bureaucracy runs. Hmm. Uh, and that's a different debate I want. So I think we need, we do need hmm. uh, a serious reform in our administrative system. Hmm. But I think it is unfair to blame the individual bureaucrat or the individual DM for being un unable to deliver because the system has not been no, no, no. set up for delivery of services. It's mm. been set up for control. Mm. So you are getting that. Mm. And yes, so since it's about control, you are therefore creating this persona of uh, power yeah. and authority. Yeah. And but that the poor is person. That every kid is growing up to see. Yeah, maybe uh, that is part. Because Mukesh Ambani is so much more uh, far for them, even aspirations. Well, maybe than not in DM. Mumbai, as I said. Exactly, but but, but you know, so many. Some of them want to be Shah Rukh Khan. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, but my point is, look, we live in a world where some people should want to be Shah Rukh Khan. They should want hmm. to be P.T. Usha. Hmm. 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 Uh, we should want to be a scientist, hmm. Uh, hmm. and so on. And we need to widen this out. Hmm. And this is not. 
this is not about thinking oh we'll create the aspirations and things will change hmm. i am just flipping the whole thing on its head and saying no hmm. only when we have those aspirations will the thing change hmm. 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 so it is the poverty of aspiration that is the driving force right. of the problem right not the problem that is leading to these aspirations right Mr. Sanal, thank you so much for taking out this time to speak to us. And the next time we meet, we will discuss administrative reforms, which you think, uh, which I think you have a lot to say about. But we'll meet another time to discuss more on that. Thank you so much for watching.